and likely David. We'll see if he hops on in a bit. And today's theme is no boundaries. So yeah, I'm really excited for that. And I want to pass it on to Kenneth now. Welcome everyone. Oh, it's good to see you all. Oh, let me just change my screen there. There we go. Uh, thank you for coming. There's David. I'm just going to make David a co host there. Make co host. There you go. You're now co host, David. You can unmute. Okay. Hi. Mike. Mike, David. No problem. That's a topic I love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, this actually came about. Um, well, I, fa I felt like it was actually a continuum from what we were talking about last week. And um, in my in my prayers, this was the sort of theme that kept in my mind. Um, and it actually came through um, my reading to the course. And Jesus talking about um, the crucifixion. Um, in chapter six, um, it's the first section in there. And um, he talks about in there, yeah, I cannot be, I, I was not persecuted. And if I believed it, I would be teaching that. Um, and so that was why the thought that was coming into my mind was that, that the boundless experience of truth. And so, um, that was something in my heart. It was like, yeah, all of these beliefs of the body, of this world, of a personality, of behaviors are all completely and utterly false. And Jesus is the representation of um, that. That can be completely undone um, and you can um, reach the boundless state. And so just reading that chapter for me then that section is like him talking to me um and i've gone over it so many times and listened to it and it's just fabulous because i think you know when we when we look at these things of crucifixion you would think oh my god i would never want to go through that that seems absolutely awful and jesus is like well actually it was actually part of my teaching um, opportunity <laughs> um, and um, no one else has to go through that um, that was exactly what the teaching was um, and for me you know when it, I, I felt before of course in miracles if you talk about crucifixion you know it's just like oh my god that's absolutely awful I don't want to look at it I don't want to see it seeing a cross was just a, a, an awful thing and then um, and Jesus actually clarifies that in the beginning and says, well, the reason why it's taken me six chapters to actually talk about this is because of the fear um, that is in the mind around um, the so-called crucifixion. But of course, he clarifies it all and says, well, in actual fact, the actual teaching of it was teach only love for that is what you are. And I'm just like, Jesus, you are on another level. I mean, how did you get there? How did you get to that? Oh my God, that is amazing. That is wonderful. So I think that for me, that gives that that gives me the hope to carry on. It's like, you know, Jesus says, oh, you're, you're not different than me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm no better than you. Um, I was in the same position of, as you. It's just that I simply remembered. 
I remembered what was false and I remembered what was true. And that's simply the, 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 the difference. And now my hand is outstretched to you to say, hey, listen, you can let go of all of these, all of this belief system and you can return to love, peace and joy with me um, eternally. And it's like, OK, well, that's a that's a that's a, that's probably one of the best offers I've ever been offered in this life so far. So, mm -hmm. um, in fact, it's probably the only offer that's worth taking um, in this lifetime. Yeah. That's for sure. So it's like, OK, I'm definitely going um, full whack in this direction. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. And he says, you know, you, you um, in your life. Um, you will go through much lesser um, situations than I seemingly went to through, through a crucifixion. And that is to teach you that you can truly overcome it. You can, over, you can overcome anything and that your mind is so powerful to do that. And I am that demonstration in your mind to um, allow you to achieve that really. Um, and so it was funny, actually, a, a, a friend messaged me the other day. She, we, we were just we were just talking in message. And then she said, do you think you'll ever get over your anger? And I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. You know, this, is, this isn't fixed. I'm making it all up. She was like, oh, OK, that's that, that, that's good. That's good. And I said, yeah, obviously, I'm just I'm just I'm just choosing this at the moment. But I have no doubt in my mind, you know, it's not me that's going to overcome it. <laughs> I can't overcome what's not real in the beginning. I am just um, choosing um, this false this false perception and perception can be changed as quick as that. You know, and I was sitting there praying about that uh, uh, just before we came on. And I said, it's like, it's like um, me saying to you, can you wipe that one single breadcrumb off of the um, counter? Do you feel that you've got enough strength to do that? And you would say to me, you've got to be kidding, aren't you? Of course I can wipe that one breadcrumb off. And this is what Jesus sees in our tiny mad ideas. I mean, he's sitting there absolutely laughing. He, find, he finds it hilarious, this place. This is his comedy of all of our beliefs and that. I mean, he's, he's rolling on the floor all day long, just laughing when you start praying about all of your problems to him. Um, he's just like, oh my God, this is, this is nothing. This is nothing to me. And um, I want you to see that truly that this is nothing. So he, he, he's laughing so hard at us when we believe this. And he wants us to join in the, in, in, in the cosmic joke. And he wants us to see that it's a complete and utter joke. And when you see it's a complete and utter joke, you will definitely know that you are completely and utterly boundless and that there are truly no boundaries and that you are putting these boundaries upon yourself. And of course, in that chapter that I've been talking about, that's what he says. He says, well, actual fact, you're, you, you know, you're, you're forever crucifying yourself. Um, you know, you believe in it. Therefore, you, you, you generate it. And this need not be. So this is what this talks all about. And yeah, as, as, as you said, David, there's nothing, there's nothing better to talk about to understand that you're completely and utterly boundless. Just, I mean, I'm just feeling it in my heart right now. I'm just like, oh my God, yes, that is the direction. How foolish am I to believe anything else of this world? That is complete and utter nonsense that I can be bound to time and space that anything can hold me back from being the, the way, the truth and the life. As Jesus told, you know, that wasn't just for him, that was for us. And of course, that's actually the theme for our online retreat at the end of the month. Um, and so I feel like that's why um, this is coming very strong. I think I think this next month of Get Real will be us deepening in our connection with Jesus um and as our catch line our catchphrase what well, jesus's catchphrase i am the way the truth and the life mm. wow well, you know mm. it's beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful tomorrow i've been invited to go on a, a, a basically biblically based uh <laughs> a youtube channel with a friend of mine so it's all bible you know, the father this and the father that, and it's so um, 
Beautiful. So uh, they actually have, in this Bible-based uh, YouTube, they've started Course in Miracles groups in the Bible-based um, YouTube channel. Now, isn't that beautiful? Uh, I love it. I love to talk to people in their whatever language they want to talk to me. In. And I was, of course, raised Christian. But I think for Jesus, like you were sharing, the, the first step is, is getting a clear definition of, of death because there are many religions and philosophies and uh, all kinds of cultures that that talk about death and believe death to be a physical thing like happening at the end of a human life or at the end of, a, of an animal life or plant life and it's a biological definition of death and when you were sharing that you know Jesus says you You've reacted for years as if you're being uh, crucified. So he's not talking about death in terms of a physical, biological death, because to him that doesn't mean anything. Um, it doesn't mean anything at all. He actually sees that the body was never born and it can't die. It's an image. It's a projection. So what's a projection doesn't really have a beginning or an end uh, in time. and. So then he brings it to a psychological definition of, of death by saying you have reacted for years as if you're being crucified. In other words, he's saying you get upset, you get uh, angry, you get jealous, you, you get defensive. It's all crucifixion. Uh, it need not be, but your, your whole perception of the world is tied into uh, this false belief in ego. So the synonym for death is ego. Uh, and if you wanted to bring in the Christian terms, Satan is death, ego is death, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, the devil <laughs> is death. If you believe in death, you do believe in the devil. There's no doubt about it. Nobody can say uh, there is no death except if you have transcended the belief in the ego, in the devil, in Satan. So. What I like about that is let's we can look closer at that that belief, that psychological belief, and see through it. That's what Jesus is saying. You know, there's nothing there. But probably the way that people could relate to it the best is the idea that we talk about in our community of no private thoughts and no people pleasing. Both those things, I mean, Frances said she, first time she heard the guideline, no people pleasing, she had fear come up. She thought, oh, hell, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do well in this community. <laughs> no, no people pleasing, oh my God. Most people, if they start to just look at their interactions with their parents or children or neighbors or government or the world, it's steeped in people pleasing. It's a lot of acting for approval acting for approval, psychological approval, you know, it just goes on and on. But the other one I like to go at is based on, it really is what the people pleasing is based on, is private thoughts are secrets. And um, Jesus is basically telling us the only secret is you're keeping it from yourself, that you're innocent, that you're completely innocent. You don't want to, to accept that. In fact, you're, you're dead set. You are really highly invested in being guilty uh, if you believe in this world and time. And he's saying it's, it's quite an addiction. It's not, in reality, it's not an addiction, but in your awareness, uh, this heavy investment in death is, uh, is taking away your peace of mind. It's keeping your peace of mind out of awareness. He does go so far at one point in the course to say that this is a world of death worshipers. <laughs> I never heard that. I mean, that would have been helpful even growing up in the Christian church if uh, they had said in, from the pulpit, this is a world of death worshipers. I would have said, oh, great, tell me more. <laughs> Before I start considering an education or a career, I need to know what this death worshiping is all about. And here's the dynamics. If you believe you have thoughts that you can keep secret from anything or anyone, then 
you simply don't know the holy instant and you don't know pure innocence. So it's not that you shouldn't judge. It's not that you shouldn't have private thoughts. But when you attempt to hold on to private thoughts that only you would keep for yourself that nobody else can know, you're attempting something that's impossible. What's the consequences of trying to hold on to private thoughts? Well, the whole world you see, the whole perceptual world of time and space is the, a reflection of the belief that private thoughts are possible. I mean, I just see that there's so much people pleasing that goes on and it's all tied into fear of hurting someone. And that's what private thoughts are. The private thoughts are the beliefs that you can hurt someone and therefore you have to hide them because you'll bring destruction if you uh, even would speak these private thoughts. And we've learned from Jesus, no, no, don't hide them. Uh, don't cover them or hide them. Uh, they're not real, but as long as you keep hiding them, you do believe in them and you have to expose them and release them. So, uh, Kenneth, you're from uh, Great Britain. I have to tell you a, a fairy tale story. You know, I mean, I, I grew up and I, I got to watch Lady Diana and Charles <laughs> ride in the carriage. And I got to watch the royal wedding uh, much earlier in my life. And then I got to watch another royal wedding uh, with Meghan Markle and uh, Prince Harry. And then uh, it, was, it was beautiful. And I even had some people here at the temple. I said, look, they're in the carriage. Come on, come on in here. And I got Lisa and Francis and they all got to watch the carriage go down the long road and everything. And then um, we all know that uh, they made a few decisions that the royal life was not for them. Uh, I happened to see a John Oliver, who's a comedian and he came on right before the wedding and he he said, I think she should back out. He said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't marry into that family. Uh, he said, that's crazy. Uh, she's going to have emotional stress. She's going to bring emotional stress on her if she marries into that family. And the, and the comedian host said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, basically, they're crazy. <laughs> it's a crazy family. And he said, I wouldn't be a part of it. They said, well, even if you were knighted by the queen? And he said, no, I know I'm right now. I'm what I'm saying, I, I'm disqualifying myself from that family completely. So they left the family and then they just did an interview with Oprah. And then in the interview with Oprah, uh, basically Harry was saying that, that someone in the royal family was concerned about the color of the skin of, of their little baby boy uh, that, that wasn't even born yet. And then it just exploded into a whole thing. And uh, after the interview, Harry said, well, it wasn't the queen and it wasn't her husband, Philip. It was someone else. And I will never tell, ever tell who the person was that was concerned about how dark the, the skin of Archie was. I will never tell. And I just saw that today and I went, okay, now they, he said, the reason he won't tell is it would be too damaging uh, for the person. If he named the person, it would be too damaging. And I thought, now that's a perfect example. <laughs> that's a perfect example of what we're talking about. We're not talking about the crucifixion that happened 2,000 years ago because Jesus has taught us in the Course that the resurrection of the mind occurred before the crucifixion. He was awake uh, before he was crucified. And if he's, and once you're awake, you're awake for good, you know. So it, it just, it null and voided the crucifixion. You can't kill the spirit. And he knew he was spirit. Before Abraham was, I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. That's You're not going to kill that presence. But the belief in private thoughts and the beliefs in secrets that, that they can 
be destructive, that you can actually harm someone or something by one of these private thoughts, is giving value and meaning to these erroneous thoughts that the ego generated. And so the real key, if you want to resurrect and you want to live forever, is don't try to hold on to private thoughts. First of all, in, in the workbook, Jesus says, you, you have no private thoughts. He comes out in the workbook and says, you have no private thoughts, and yet that is all that you are aware of. Well, that just must mean that's insanity. If, if I have no private thoughts and yet my mind is filled with private thoughts and secrets, then it must mean that that's pure deception and insanity. And what better way than to practice with your brothers and sisters and teach what you would learn that you have no secrets. And if you have no secrets, you wouldn't need boundaries. And if you have no boundaries, you wouldn't need rules. And none of us like rules. <laughs> Let's all admit it. Everybody raise your hand. I'm gonna put gallery on so I can just see a witness for this. <laughs> Is there anybody who, who doesn't like rules? I don't like rules. I don't like, none of us do. Let's admit it, we, I can see you all there. None of us like rules. In fact, some of us have been rebels. We say rules are made to be broken. You know, we're, we're, we're really, uh, come on, just try me. Put a rule on me, uh, see, see if that works. But what Jesus is saying is, if you believe in private thoughts, then you believe that secrets can hurt and you do believe in boundaries and you are setting up rules in time and space that aren't real. And then you're going to believe you have to live by them, like scarcity, or you might set up government rules, or you might have interpersonal rules in your relationships. Okay, you've got to put the toilet seat up. We mm -hmm. will not continue in this relationship if that toilet seat is not up. I'm warning you, don't, you know, and, and there's rules with everything. And what Jesus is saying is, they're just believed in your mind. You're under no laws but God's. You are created by an eternal being and he gave you one eternal law, which is love. And you are pure love and nothing else but pure love. And now you've generated these make-believe uh, rules of time and space. There are limits. There are limits on your reality. There are limits on your awareness. There are limits on, on who you are. You're playing small when you make up rules. And then when you believe in the rules and you believe you have to obey the rules, you've set up a real tight uh, illusion that, that doesn't seem like an illusion. And for most human beings, they would say, well, scarcity seems to be a reality. I'm in this realm now and I have to have to make a living. I have to pay the bills. I have to find a way to eat. I have to find a place to sleep. It's a world of scarcity and lack. So this is, we're opening a can of worms, Ken. You know, when we say that the crucifixion is teach only love for that is what you are, then Jesus is saying, your reality is only love. And you need to demonstrate that to yourself and to everyone in order to be free. Wouldn't that make sense? If, if we're divine love, we have to live as if we don't have an ego. We have to live as if we've transcended the ego. And I know in my life, I thought, wow, that is radical. <laughs> I thought, well, Jesus, I'm saying yes to you, but that is radical. He's saying, well, yeah, now you have to learn divine providence. You have to trust me to guide you and help you navigate time and space through my direction. Don't go looking to employers and governments and, and family members and siblings for your safety and security and happiness. Look to me. I'll, I'll guide you in every single circumstance. I'll guide you to live 
under the joy and light of heaven and you will be so happy and it's not going to be circumstance dependent you know somebody doesn't like you okay that's all right it doesn't have to determine your happiness whether someone likes you or not just trying try to share these ideas in a public way like i was doing so called public <laughs> and wow you you get to be either a punching bag or a target practice you know, when you go around. But why are you so happy? No, well, it's I have a great creator. I, say, and I had a good teacher. That's all I can say. But this this is why I know when I go on that uh, that uh, Christian program, that Bible based program tomorrow. One, of, they sent me the questions already. Some of them. And they said, what are these guidelines you have at your monastery? No people pleasing and no private thoughts. Now, isn't that fun to go on a Bible based show and talk about no people pleasing and no private thoughts? I love it. I, I love these uh, opportunities. And I see their sincerity there to ask that question, you know, is really a, a very sincere question uh, coming from those that are just trained in the Bible, you know, that's a very sincere question. And I think for all of us, we can go pretty deep into this because like Ken is saying this, if we're going to follow Jesus completely, if we're gonna follow Jesus without exception, then we need to understand that only the thoughts of God can be shared, can be extended. When you try to share a private thought or a secret or you try to share something confidential. Ooh, I'll tell you something, but it's <laughs> confidential. Don't tell anyone else. When you try to share a confidential thought, you are generating a false world of time and space from that secret, from that one private thought will generate a whole cosmos. And zero private thoughts will set you free from time and space. And that's how deep we have to go with the mind training. That's why I just say, be transparent. I'm not feeling well, somebody says, I'm not really not feeling well. I say, tell me about it, go ahead. I'm okay, I'm, I'm, I'm invulnerable. You can <laughs> cast your cares upon me for I care for you. It doesn't matter what you share with me, I'm still gonna love you and, and I'm, it's, my life depends on loving you because that's who created me. I have to, to give that love away to keep it in awareness. So of course, go ahead, share whatever. And maybe Kenneth, you can share. I mean, you came into the community. How many years ago was it? It was quite a few four and years. A half, four and a half years four ago. Four and a half years. Yeah. And, and so what's it been like for you? with no private thoughts and no people pleasing how yeah. how has your life changed with that uh, guideline well when i when i first saw the guidelines no private thoughts and no people pleasing was before i chose to come to live in miracles and i was in the same boat as francis and my whole body quivered and i thought my god if they um heard what was in my mind um i'm definitely going to be chucked out so um, it took some time before my courage um, would come, you know, would, would, would allow me to come really. Because um, I remember I, I, I loved A Course in Miracles and I was just like, I just want to be around these, I just want to be around people all the time that do this. This is just, this is what I want to do. So I typed in A Course in Miracles community. And of course, that's actually how I find you, David, through that search. And I was like, there's a community. No private thoughts, no people pleasing, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you just qualified yourself I did. In, in one instant. <laughs> I did, I did. But, it, but, but the funny thing was, is, is my fear was up, but at the same time, I knew that there was something in it. And it was like, uh, and I, I, I remember feeling inside, okay, I'm going to have to prepare myself for this. I'm going to have to get my mind into this into this state of being and um so yeah the miracles came to bring me to um mexico which was completely and utterly obvious i mean really that, that as you've always shared david that's the easy part of this journey i mean it's nothing 
um, and what we've just been sharing actually you have to want God above everything else it's as simple as that if you're not putting your goal up front um, um, your heart's desire is for that and only that then he will make the path straight for you but if um, there's any doubt in your mind you know you're going to get that so one of the questions was is actually from Maya about you know undoing the family roles and all this business and it's like well yeah if you haven't fully um committed to this you're gonna get a lot of stuff coming in from the side hitting you and, and battering you and what I've always found you know is is make the commitment first and so for me once I made that commitment um, my path was very very straight so I know that others uh, others have struggled with this but i say listen get your get your head in the right place like mm -hmm. god first and it was very simple but now the sort of real work begins because i have private thoughts and one of mine was violence anger um and i did psychotherapy training and really that it wasn't really that welcome there. So I felt like I had to hold on to a lot of stuff and um, I felt a lot of guilt. And so when I was a psychotherapist, I would have like an amazing day with all of my clients and I'd be like, wow, this is great. And then my ego would go, yeah, but we know who you are, don't you? You're just making up for lost time because you're just violent, you're aggressive, you're angry, and we know what you did in the past. So I was completely haunted by this guilt so I could never really sort of enjoy my practice, so to speak, of seemingly doing doing something that I really enjoyed and something that I loved. There was still this guilt. And so I had to have this chance. And so when Living Miracles came along, I just thought, well, listen, this is my last chance. No one else is giving me the opportunity to, to share this. And I have to um, accept that I may be rejected, you know. And of course, that was underneath it all is if I really, really share um, what the hell is going to happen. And of course, that has, it, that has happened to me a lot in this life. It's been like, okay, listen, you're, you're crazy, even though the last fight I ever had was 25, you know, it's, it's a long time, it's, it's, God, 15 years ago. But yeah, I still, car I still carried that around with me. And I always got these reflections of, yeah, that's not acceptable. So I always felt rejected. And so I felt like, OK, well, this is my last chance then. Um, I'd built up enough courage in myself now to be like, well, listen, I'll, 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 t I'll take the knocks. And yeah, it was when I came to Mexico, actually, it was a, it was an amazing experience. We just watched a movie and to tell you the truth, it was such a deep evening. Um, I can't remember the movie. And my my dear friend Laverne at the time, she'd sh she'd showed the movie and it brought up this sort of anger in me. It was there. And she was, she said, have you got something to say? And, and and I felt as if she was poking me saying, go on, go on, share it. And I said, listen, you don't want me to start getting angry around here. I can assure you of that. And she said, no, no, it's, it's welcome. I mean, it's almost like she was like poking me like this. Listen, Laverne, I'm telling you, you don't want me to start getting out of hand. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, it's all welcome here. So she was encouraging. It was like the, you know, the ego felt like I was being poked. And I thought, okay, here we go then. And I was just so angry. She said, I was like Wolverine. She said, with yeah. that. that's what she said. I got, I was like, all of a sudden I leaped out my, I took my shirt off. I just went, Wah. and and the beast, the beast came out. And I was just going mad for about 10 minutes. And I was, I was angry at God and all kinds of things. And I was, you know, saying, you get down here, you've put me in this position. And I shared all this anger and I shared for 10 minutes. And then I sat back in the chair, <laughs> I put my t-shirt back on. And then she said, you're not finished yet, are you? And I knew that I'd slightly held back, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> even though that was pretty like, whoa. And I was like, and then she said, go on, go on. And I went, and off comes the shirt again <laughs> and away I go and I thought well if I'm going to be chucked out I might as well be chucked out in style so <laughs> so here I go I go absolutely berserk and one of the reasons was is because there was women in the room and I thought oh my god if they hear what I've got to say um it's just going to be game over for me and um so anyway I I, I shared 
and then it was like as if this peace transcended on the whole place but i was like in this guilt and i thought okay that's game over for me so we were going to bed and um uh laverne comes to me and she says thank you so much and this is when she said she said you were just like wolverine <laughs> <And> <laughs> give me this big hug <laughs> she gives me this big hug i love you and i'm like you've got to be kidding me and yeah i mean it was just like my whole brain was like what the hell's going on so i went to we went to bed that night and i thought okay so the guilt was there i thought okay we're going to go into the expression in the morning and it's going to be game over for me and it, and I'm, I'm i'm expecting this barrage of attack coming my way and or i'm probably going to be asked to leave at this point so anyway we all go into the room and we're all sitting there and Laverne says, oh, okay, has anyone got any expressions? And um, there was a girl there that had only been with us for about two months. And uh, and she said, I've got something to say. And my heart's pounding. I'm thinking, here we go. This is to do with me. And she said, I just want to say thank you for what you did last night. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And I went completely berserk. She said, my father sexually abused me all of my life and she said at night i never sleep very well um and she said last night she said when you did that last night you were fighting all the demons in my mind and when i went to bed it was as if you'd cleared absolutely everything and i have had the best night's sleep of my life so i want to say thank you for what you just did and I was like, you can't be kidding me. And I'm like, okay then, right? And then the next person goes, I've got something to say. I thought, here we go. And they said, I want to say thank you too, because I've been holding back on my anger and I'm really angry too. And then they started sharing all of their anger, right? So they did their bit. And then the next one came and said, yes, and I'm really angry too. Then they shared their anger. And everybody basically went round the room and thanked me for what I did last night. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been holding this in all of my life. I share all of this craziness and now I'm being thanked for it. And this is actually what I've, this is, this is the miracle of it. I mean, I've so many times like, and I had a, uh, we had one on one partners as well. We used to call them buddies. You would have a buddy. So um, you could message your buddy whenever you want and they come and you join and you like you let up all your private thoughts. And mine was Pete's. And so I had a ton of private thoughts and they were once I started to allow it up, all this violence was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. Pete, and I was like, Pete, I did this. Pete, I did that. There I am. I'm crying. And, he, and he's just listening to me. And Pete's like completely the opposite of me. He's into art and everything. And I'm thinking this guy's going to be completely hating me. I'm just sharing everything with him. And then it's one day he turns around after one of the sessions. He goes, you know what? Thank you so much for, for all that you share um, because you've really, really helped me. And I'm like, have I? And he said, yeah, because I've thought all the things that you've seemingly done. And I feel like by you sharing, you're actually getting this out of my system. So I'm actually feeling much better. And I'm like, this is blessing everybody. I can't believe it. <laughs> and so when we truly share these things, these wild things, yeah, oh God, I kicked someone's head in. I did this. I put someone in hospital and I'm thinking, oh my God, what are they going to think of me? thank you because i've thought about doing the same things i'm like what the hell and so it has become a, a complete and utter blessing and and the same as on these episodes when i've shared every week i get someone saying thank you so much i felt the same no one's ever said that and that's 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 how that's how i how i felt and of course that's that's what's been covering up as as, as david shared um this innocence and I actually remember a, 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 a session that you did, David, that really touched my heart. It was with um, Lisa's um, son, Paulie, and um, he'd been in prison and everything. I've only just watched it. I only just found it about two weeks ago. And I was like, oh, my, it blew my mind apart. And um, he'd been in prison and he came out of prison and he was working and stuff. And he felt like he because his reputation would affect 
living miracles and that he didn't really deserve to be here to to be here um and that he could be a you know cost the reputation of living miracles you know he had all of these thoughts around it um and um david did a one-on-one -on -one with him and, and was just like no you know you've done nothing wrong and like we thank you for all your devotion and here and we are here with you and you just did this beautiful like joining with him and then you held his hand and he and he was and he and he was able to cry and you were saying listen we know who you really are this is not who you who you are and this is and this is what we're we're undoing all of the, all, all of this thought system and it's just like yeah there's just this fear that we're never ever going to be we're never ever going to be accepted the ego is a wild beast in its own way it wants to believe that and things can get acted out and things can be in the mind and if you are a prisoner to guilt you know that that actually as jesus says guilt is hell and if you believe that you would actually drop it completely <laughs> and spring back into heaven that's that's the formula guilt is hell no thank you <laughs> game over is is that simple and so as david was sharing we hold on to so much guilt and i was holding on to so much guilt as to what had happened and so i've got deep gratitude for for for, for this process of no um private thoughts has completely freed me because to be fair you know what i've just shared like a lot of it i i don't even I don't even think about them in the in, in, in this. I don't think about them in the same way, you know. And as Jesus was sharing in his crucifixion, teach only love for that is what you are. You know, for me, it was like like Jesus would would, would, would always say to me. You are calling for love. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. You were simply calling for love and you didn't know how to connect. And that's what really the whole thing was all about. And that's what truly what you were the, the, the what you were seeking. And it doesn't matter how you got there, but you got but you got there now. And that's and that's what matters. And to him, you know, the the one of the most beautiful things that happened actually after all of my sharings of all whatever I'd seemingly done, I've shared it many times, but it touched me, was when I was sitting there with Jesus and I was sharing more more with him. And that was my um, sharing my private thoughts with Jesus. And then Jesus is sitting there, mm, mm, nodding his head. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I feel as if I've shared everything. And I'm, why have you graced me with your presence? And how come you give me so much love? And then he just, he's sitting there listening to me. And then he says, Kenneth, you've never disappointed me. And I just go, bang, cry my eyes out. And I'm like, he just doesn't see it. You've never disappointed me, no matter what. And it's like, so yeah, there's plenty of ways to express your private thoughts. Jesus is available 24 <laughs> <laughs> 17. He's a good one. <laughs> so yeah, after, you know, it's, it's, it's like levels. It's like levels, you know, more, more comes up through, through, through the expression, but it's like, you know, you clear so much, then half of it, half of it goes with it really that's that, that that's what that's what i've that's what i've found so yeah wow just have the courage to do it that's what i say and that's what get real has been been all about really is to have that courage and and even for me to get on here when i haven't want to share it off so i'm sitting in my chair thinking i don't want to share this and jesus says no go on you're gonna do it okay then jesus here we go <laughs> but if you have that trust with him that's the most important thing if you have that deeper trust and you know that he's with you then yeah it doesn't it, do, it doesn't really matter so yeah that's my experience <laughs> yeah. that's beautiful because i think everyone can feel that then that is authentic practical spiritual awakening and what we've believed in this world sometimes we believe in spiritual rituals or repetition of things or holding on to certain theologies and beliefs and it's actually the expose and release of private thoughts and uh, and all the dark emotions that come with private thoughts and and so that's a good witness though that's a good example i think maybe a little bit over two years ago i remember you and i went down to this little mall down here uh, between ihihik and and san antonio and 
I think we were walking along in the mall and you said, I will dedicate my next year to releasing anger. So it was actually a conscious uh, thing where you said, I will dedicate the entire year just to releasing anger. And that does remind me of that, that movie we just watched last week, uh, Revolver. Yeah. Because one of the ideas that was repeated in Revolver was where you don't want to go, that's where you'll find him. And that's meaning the ego. The ego is hidden and tucked away, pushed down out of awareness in unconscious mind. Where you don't want to go, that's where you'll find him. So when you were saying to me, I dedicate this next year to releasing this anger, you were basically saying like Jake Green, yeah. I'm on to you. I'm coming for you. That was your declaration. It's like, oh, you're down under the surface. I'm coming for you. And then in the end, you know, you don't own me. You don't control me. I control you. That's where the mind training comes in, where you actually have dominion over the ego, which means you have dominion over the whole world. If, if you can be peaceful, with this world, that means you don't believe in the ego. You're not interpreting the world through the ego's filter. And that's how you transcend the ego, by cleaning the mind, by releasing the darkness. So this, these two guidelines, you know, I, I, didn't, I just, years ago, I was given those guidelines from Jesus. One time I was in China and I was with this man, Nasheen, in China. And... And I got to know him and he was the man that brought A Course in Miracles to China. This is the, I'm talking to the guy that brought A Course in Miracles to China, Nasheen. Sweet guy. I mean, he was so peaceful and so sweet and happy. And then one time he wrote to me and he said, David, I've been praying a lot on your two guidelines, no people pleasing, no private thoughts. And Nasheen said, I see there's a corollary between no people pleasing and no private thoughts and something in the courts. And I said, really, what, what is it? He said, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Those are the corollaries of no people pleasing and no private thoughts. And I said, that's the introduction. That's <laughs> Jesus' introduction. So it has to be practical, you know, um, you have to put it into practice. Mother Teresa, you know, she was on a train ride in India when she had this huge calling to give her life. In a, she was already a nun, but that, was, that wasn't it. She actually had to give her, like in her prayer, give her whole life to Jesus uh, on this train ride when she was uh, going through rural India. And I think that's the thing for all of us. You know, you just seem... Uh, the witness that Ken gave and what, what Ken is just pointing out is that the darkness won't hurt you, it won't destroy you. Uh, the belief of hiding is a belief that if the darkness comes up, it will bring destruction. Even Prince Harry now is married to Meghan Markle. I'm not gonna, he said, I can't tell who was concerned about Archie's skin color because that would bring destruction Onto them, but still, anything in what we're seeing for healing, you have to be able to raise anything up into awareness and see that that is not a real thought, and and you cannot be hurt by unreal thoughts. You cannot be hurt by secrets because the ego made the secrets, and and Jesus says, "Do not be afraid of the ego." He says, you made the ego by believing in it and you can dispel it by withdrawing your beliefs from it. So he's saying, you have a powerful mind. We share a powerful mind. And, and as long as we don't invest it and put our faith of this powerful mind in the ego, then we'll be happy. But if you take a powerful mind and you invest it in something that's a death wish, <laughs> He's saying, not a good idea. <laughs> I, he even says in, in the course, I can't take your anger away, but I can help you look at the conditions in which you set it up for yourself. And then you can escape. 
And he says, if I took it away, I would be saying, you proving that you need external, you need help outside of yourself. When actually our workbook lesson for today, if you're doing the calendar uh, year of workbook lessons is, my salvation comes from me. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's, that's a workbook lesson. My salvation comes from me. He said, nothing outside you can save you and nothing outside you can hurt you. And you have to come to this realization that, that you are not at the mercy of this world because you can let it go as easily as you tried to make it up. You can just let it go and let it go for good. And that's why we're all here. That's why we're doing this. We're, we're here, we're cheerleaders. We're all mm -hmm. cheerleaders for one another. We're cheering each other on mm -hmm. to this uh, great atonement, to this great release. Mm -hmm. and, and hallelujah for that. Yes. <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah, thank you so much. That's just, yeah, that's everything. I was just thinking, David, maybe we might as well open it up now. Do you feel yeah. good with that? Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. Andy, would you like to open it up for questions? Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. So we can open it up now. I'll put the instructions in the chat below. And, yeah, if you feel like you're, you're bursting from your heart, you really have, like, a question or something to express, and you want to raise your hand, you can do so. Um, and yeah, we just want to get to everyone today. So we can start with Evelyn. Evelyn, you can unmute. Hi. Hi, Evelyn. Hi. Hi. Um, I had um, um, yesterday, there was uh, there were workmen at my tiny house for some uh, leakage. Let me say that on the yeah. roof, and um, uh, <laughs> there were there were two of them. Um, one couldn't speak and was deaf and the other one was Turkish and didn't understand and speak Dutch and I had to explain what was <laughs> what was the problem so <laughs> I found it funny at the same time but then they um they came and they tried to fix it and he went on the roof and he, the, the death man, and he signed the other one. Uh, <laughs> so he, he, he wanted to use uh, silicon uh, sealant. Yeah. yeah, at least he didn't bring a yeah. gun. Let's shoot a hole in the roof. That would have been a good forgiveness lesson. <laughs> so, and I was, um, I was trying to stay with Jesus, but the thoughts were going like, um, Brutzwerk. I, I. <laughs> Pottering work. <laughs> I searched the word <laughs> pottering work. <laughs> it was always going in my mind. Pottering work. Oh, pottering. Prutzwerk. Prutzwerk. <laughs> and then um, there was another thing. Today it was very windy, very, very windy. The wind came from all sides. And um, and my Christmas tree was falling down. I, I, I bought some plants in pots. They were falling down and rolling all over the garden. And, um, and uh, um, I had some sail 
on the on the fence sail is not the right word i think fabric mm. and um and it was blown away it came loose and i had fixed it for two times so i was so angry and it was i was i was painting yesterday evening and it I didn't like it. It was prutzwerk, <laughs> pottering. <laughs> so that word was constantly in my mind. And then um, today I had a, a, a call with a mighty companion. And then it came down to I was so much hating myself. Just that pottering prutzwerk in my mind. Everything I do is pottering, pottering, pottering. So I was beating myself up all the time. And, and that that's what I see in all those workmen. And it was so releasing that I could see, oh, wow. It's just my, my, my own hate. It's... it's mm. It's, it's the hate for, for, for myself. And it isn't true. It's, it cannot be true. And I pro project it on, on all those workmen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was so clear this, this, this afternoon that it's coming from myself that I don't think I'm not good enough. It's always that I'm not good enough. Everything I do is prutzwerk. <laughs> pottering, pottering. <laughs> so that's, yeah. And then I had another thing I wrote to Kenneth. And that's um, that I was thinking, <laughs> uh, thinking of um, inviting someone in my tiny house to work in the in the garden and um, and practice the no people pleasing and the no private thoughts so yeah it's funny you talk about it <laughs> this evening and um And I find that very scary because it's my tiny house. It are my rules, and I'm. I, when when I think of it, just this afternoon I was thinking about it. It are a lot of rules. <laughs> so that's. Um, A big step and I, I, I think I want to want to hmm, I don't dare to say it but <laughs> I want to experience it mm. so when I'm with somebody else in, in, in somebody else's home I don't mind to to play by by their rules that's not a problem but when it's from me ooh then it's another thing. It takes a lot of surrender. I mean, yeah. just to anticipate, if you are aware of all these house rules and you're thinking of inviting someone in, then, you know, if, if you start to hold on to the rules and try to protect and defend and, and get adherence, you know, other people to adhere to the rules, You can tell it's going to be very difficult. That that will be a very difficult road. And then the alternative is is to surrender, uh, surrender the expectations, to to put your faith and and your torch out front. Okay, I'm going to have a peaceful day, no matter what happens, and I'm going to really practice extending love because that's that's surrendering that that word that you had in your mind that's just like the root of the self-hatred. You know, it's almost like you're, you're saying, like Kenneth said, I'm going to devote myself to 
to let this go. I, you know, I don't like how it feels. Actually, where Kenneth is broadcasting from, the Quantico, we we have something that we don't often do. We have, Kenneth has roommates and a house, and now two guests have come. <laughs> one from Monterey, Mexico, and one from Switzerland, and they're in the house. And so I did a, a Zoom call with them the other day, uh, and they were like, we can't do anything right. Every single tiny little thing we do, it's no, 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 no. Don't flush that toilet. No, don't do this. Don't leave that door open. No, you went, you got the food, but you got it too early. Nobody told you to get the food. So I was talking to the two ladies and they finally, they confessed. They said, well, we finally discovered we're always wrong. Every single thing we do is completely wrong. And we all just laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed because they took it as that was their lesson, that, that the only way they could be happy and keep laughing was to surrender and accept all things exactly as they're given. All things, not some things or most things, but all things. And then we all went out to a birthday uh, meeting and dinner and we all just laughed again. It was another big laugh at the very same thing. So if you surrender and you remember to laugh, which is what the surrender is, then it's it's fruitful. It's so helpful. It's, you, you're getting the whole lesson. But yeah, I know Kenneth can tell you we both we've all had those positions where where do we want to be right or happy? we start to realize there's a huge investment in being right about the rules and about the, the expectations. And yet Jesus is sending us the opportunities to, to be happy. Uh, you know, to really go for it. it's, it's the only way you can see it, where you can laugh. Otherwise, you, it would just drive you nuts. God, yeah. I mean, it's been it's been so funny for me and um, being in the house because two new people. So we seemingly have rules of the house and we've all been together for a very long time. So we sort of like know we, we know what the rules are. And so the new people are here and I'm sitting there and we're having a meeting or something. And one of them says something. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that here. You know, and it's just like, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there waiting for the response. <laughs> no, we'll talk about this afterwards. <laughs> and then, we can't do anything right. <laughs> and in actual fact, it reminds me when I very first came to community, I'm so, I'm so grateful for this. Like what you were talking about, about your hatred that's coming up because it has to come up, you know, that's as it is. And when I came to community for the first time, simple tasks i would forget and i couldn't believe it they'd be like hey uh did you take out the trash oh my god i forgot again and i'm like honestly i don't know what's going on with me um normally that it's a i know it's a very simple task but like i just can't believe i just keep keep, keep forgetting they said yeah well maybe there's something deeper underneath this i said because yeah at home i'm perfectly put trash goes out on tuesday it's, it's done, you know, that, that those types of things have never been a problem. Now I'm forgetting everything. And then it was like, oh my God, there's all this unconscious guilt in the mind that had to be seen. And so I had the same lessons as what they're having now. You know, my God, I am absolutely wrong about everything. And I actually feel guilty about everything. But it was, it was, it was freeing at the same time because it was like, I'm doing everything out of guilt wow i really want to release this now i'm seeing it this is great because now i can start releasing it i didn't realize i felt like this so then it becomes a joyful lesson you know and it's the same as your sheet that's um <laughs> flown across the garden you're like wow <laughs> god damn it and it's, like, <laughs> it's like the sheet has done you a favor it's your mighty companion the sheet is just saying there you go there's all this self-hatred that's there um, coming, coming to the surface, and then, and then you get, then you get to see it um, as a, as a, as a complete and a, a, a blessing um, for you. So yeah, every, every, everything can be used 
and I and I know that with with builders and everything, that's what I'm dealing with. And uh, a huge thing that that actually actual fact, David pointed out to me some time ago, a few few years ago. I didn't even realise this, you know. And one day I was talking with David, and um, he said, "Oh, the thing is, is you feel responsible." And I thought, God, you're right. You're feeling responsible for everything, and I just didn't see it. And then once I was able to see that I felt completely and utterly responsible for the world and how the world's going to go. And then there's all my control issues are all all involved in that and how things have got to go. Then it all starts to come to the surface, all these feelings of responsibility, guilt, self-hatred. But once you can get to see it, it's, it's, it's a complete and utter blessing. And that's what I found this week. Actually, I've got a few big jobs coming up and then I just had this anxiety because I was feeling responsible when I wasn't putting it on, on, on Jesus, basically. And I sat, sat there and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and it seemingly didn't shift. And I thought, God, I really need help. I just prayed for help. But the next day was when I was going to organize everything. And I thought, I don't know whether my prayer was answered. This was on the Sunday. And then on the Monday, oh my God, my day, Jesus was like, I've got you. And he arranged everything. It was just so easy and so light and I like took me to a new place. I found exactly what I needed. I was just like, I can't believe this. And it was so relaxing. And I got back home and I thought, what was all that anxiety about? And Jesus was like, I told you, I've got you, you know, you don't have to step into this guilt, into this hatred that you're not, that, that, that you're not enough. Put it on me and I can arrange everything. I'm here with you. And I've got a little maintenance team now, and we always join on a Tuesday. And I felt like I, in my prayer, I was thinking, I need I need more help. I, I, maybe I could call them. And my ego said, no, you can't ask them to help you on Monday. They help you on Tuesday. So you can't ask them. So anyway, when they came on the Tuesday, I shared all of my story with them. And they literally leaped out of their chair and said, no, you ring us we want to help you on any other day please we don't we're all and they, um my friend rudy said we're all in this together like this <laughs> and um, i just felt their love coming to me right and it was just jesus you know I, that's what i saw it's like jesus's love jesus was like oh, i've got you and it's like when you put that out there it was like their hearts just went oh my god of course we want to help you mm -hmm. and it was just jesus's love was there and so I actually feel that, Avalyn, with you putting out the prayer of having um, someone come to the house. Um, you're putting out that prayer. So if anyone's in Holland, you, you can tell us where, 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 you, where you live and um, <laughs> someone may want to come along and then you can have all your rules and regulations. <laughs> <laughs> We are Holland Hotline. We got a leaky roof. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. We need some help. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can tune in every Thursday and tell us how you're getting on. <laughs> 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 With all the control issues coming up. So yeah, if you want to, if someone wants to join you, you can share um, Aveline where you are, and your prayer's been put out there for a mighty companion to come and join you. Hmm. Mm. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Mm, love you. Mm. Thank you, Evelyn. And next we have Mariana with her hand up. You can unmute. Can you hear me? Hey, yeah. Mariana. Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Hey. I just wanted to express my gratitude for, for all of the sharing. Um, ever since you started the show, it's like, I've messaged you this before, but it's like, it's always right. Something that I need to hear in the moment. And I just feel so grateful for it because it's just like, it's always an answer to a prayer. And I can see that it's just like, it's really just for everything to be released. Like, having like those thoughts like the ego coming in always telling me like no this is what you've done in the past like you're guilty you've been like a slut you've been horrible nasty like all of these things always coming in when I 
you know, I start to feel the love and it's like, no, remember this, remember this. So I just kind of like you sharing that it just feels like it feels lighter and like I don't actually have to listen to that fake ego story anymore. And yeah, I just feel so grateful for that. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in every week. You know, this is what it's all about. Us joining together in that and inspiring one another to, to go on and you inspire me to carry on like this and to speak up in your sharings. And, you know, we've had one-on-one -on -one calls and you've just wanted to pour your heart out and share and just get everything out of your system and you're just not holding back. And so you are a demonstration to us all and a demonstration to me. And that's, we're in this together. So my gratitude goes to you. Thank you so much for everything that you are. You're truly blessing us all. And thank you, Mariana. I love you. Mm. Thank you, Mariana. And we can go to Anne Marie next. You can unmute. Hi, everyone. Hi, Anne Marie. Hi. Hi. Great to see you as always. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's a great joy to always join with you in all the different ways. And um, yeah, it was a couple of things I wanted to share, really. But when um, Ken, you were talking about uh, when you first went to the community with no private thoughts and no people pleasing. Um, it's really funny because when I first heard about the community from um, a friend of mine, I think you know um, David, um, John Campbell, mm -hmm. and um, he told me about your community about maybe four or five years ago. And he told me about the no private thoughts and no people pleasing. And I thought, oh, no way, that's not for me. <laughs> I can't they don't want to know what's in my mind and um so that was it brushed away um but a seed was planted and you know how it's it's amazing how our prayers are answered and how everything comes at the right time and last year um I really felt the guidance to go to Mallorca on um on a month co-living and I was like bring it on I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Mm -hmm. And I practice a lot with the, the no um, people pleasing when I did recovery in codependency. So that was, that was sort of okay with me, but the no private thoughts. And it was so funny because even before I got to Mallorca, when I received the, um, the stuff you have to read, you know, the, the guidelines and sign and I was even triggered before I even got there. And I thought, this is a spiritual community and I've got to sign all this stuff and I've got to do all of this. And I thought, my God, the stuff already, you know, starting to be flushed out and I'm not even there yet. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it was a it was an incredible experience The you know, doing the no private thoughts and and the things that it brought up in me that I could never have seen unless I'd been there, you know, I was particularly triggered by the steward that we had at the time. And I, and yeah, there was a lot of, um, I know mind, absolutely, that, that, that um, had to be flushed out. And it, what I've really loved about, you know, your community and, and everything you do is, you know, I really trust you so much. What you know, I know what you're. To, you know what you're talking about. And one of the things that's been a revelation for me, I think I sent, uh, shared this once before, was the movie nights. And I, I got, I've got so much from the movie nights. You know, when I was in Mallorca, and I carried that on. So it's probably about six months now. I've been pretty much doing a lot of the movie nights. And um, anyway, I did the one on Saturday. And mm -hmm. I think if I'd have known what the movie was beforehand, there's no way I would have gone through it. So again, the I know mind is, is so, can be so, you know, controlling. 
And that movie I did share with you a bit, David, it really triggered me. And it was particularly the scenes around that I saw around uh, the torture and um, the little girl being locked in the cupboard and all the horrific things that I perceived I was seeing. I couldn't, there's part of, I just couldn't watch. And I got up and I, I started pacing around in the kitchen. I was just pacing up and down and I was so angry with you, David. I thought, why the hell have you made me watch this movie? And, um, and then I'm, I'm laughing at myself at the same time. It's like, it's nothing to do with David and Marie. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with him. It's your ego. And I felt, actually felt, the word I used at the time was I felt traumatized by those images. And I just, when we had the 45 minute break, I just sobbed and I sobbed and I just thought, I want to heal this. And there was, a, there was a moment where I started to analyze it, you know, oh, did something happen to me as a child? Is that why I'm responding like this? And then I just sat with Jesus and Holy Spirit and I just said, please, please help me. And Jesus said to me, you don't need to analyze this, sweetheart, nothing to analyze, just give it to me, give it to me. And then I don't know what really happened. I can't even put it into words, but Jesus just spoke to me about the illusion of the body and again about, you know, when he was on the cross and he said, that wasn't real. It didn't happen to me. And it's the same with those images you're seeing. It's not real. And I still couldn't quite get my head around it, but I just, you know, I allowed that, the feelings and emotions just to come through me. And I had tears sort of most of the night. And then when I went to bed, I was absolutely exhausted. But the next day when I woke up, I still had some tears, but I just sat with God again and with, with Jesus. And it was, it was literally a miracle because I don't know what happened and I can't even put it into words, but something very deep must have been released from me because I just have felt so much peace and contentment and like freedom you know and I thought I felt like that before but this has gone to another level and I thought again I don't need to know I don't need to know I just need to turn up and just allow whatever needs to be flushed out and flushed through to to happen and and so yeah it's I'm so grateful for these opportunities and I could never, ever have imagined how powerful they've been for me. So, yeah, my, my I know mind is just <laughs> so last year. It's, I'm done with it. <laughs> done with it. I surrender. I surrender. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, that movie was, it was tough, but I'm so grateful that I stuck with it and, I will watch it again one day and I will watch it all the way through. <laughs> um, but yeah, the last scene, you know, when he came out of the elevator, my God, it made the whole movie worth it because it was just <laughs> profound, you know, just profound. And that memory is really within me. I can see him, you know, walking past and just so connected. And it's like, yep, that's the strength of God. You know, that's within me. So yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful Henry because yeah. well, we both Kenneth and I uh, felt the same movie the, the night before Revolver and then um, I have never shown the, the full movie uh, <laughs> a Revolver I've, I've actually used the elevator scene and maybe one or two others uh, clips and I've taught for many years using just those scenes uh, from the movie. But I, I heard, and both Kenneth and I heard, yeah, Revolver. And then I, before I went to bed, I looked over at Spava and I said, I don't know about this whole movie. Uh, I, it's, it's quite intense for, for this group. So I went to bed and I woke up pretty early the next day and Jesus had me go up and 
pick two spots in the middle of the movie to take out. And so he had me remove 34 minutes uh, of an hour and 45 minute uh, movie so to show to you and to show to everyone. And then I said, well, what's left? One, one, one. <laughs> that, was the, that was the footage that was left. I've only shown clips. I've used this movie just teaching from the clips. So I said, okay, one, one, one. All right, okay. So I had to give the instructions to Zach, you know, stop it at this point and then move forward. And so that was kind of, uh, Ken and I were laughing uh, after the movie uh, in the sense that we were like, wow, we cut out uh, all the gang wars. <laughs> that was 34 minutes of wickedly, <laughs> seemingly violent gang wars. And so what you got was our, our uh, light version. <laughs> And for you, that was that was your max. <laughs> you would have probably turned the thing off with the other. So Jesus is, is really helping us all, you know, uh, never get more than we can handle. But uh, at times, it's, uh, it's quite intense. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's things we just have not uh, allowed up. And then finally, we do allow them up. And I'm so glad that you've had such a, a peaceful experience after that uh, elevator scene and then for the days after like uh, like you said taking you to another level because that's that's jesus he always keeps lifting us <laughs> higher and higher and higher yeah yeah for me i i I, lo I love that movie um i find it extremely inspiring because it's like it shows the ego's devastation so so well and its viciousness and everything that really jesus talks about um in the in the course and as we've just been talking about it's like if you really knew what the ego was you would brush it aside as quick as the crumbs on the on, on, on the side but it's because we can't see it and so the movie gives a really good sort of representation of it and for me it's like oh my god do i want to choose that no way i do not want that so that for me is the inspiration and then to see Jake Green go through everything that he goes through until the end, you know, and and particularly when he's at the end of the bed as well. And he's I'm sorry for forgiveness. And he's now in his argument. You've got your gun, shoot him. And, you know, and the ego's voice is there. I'm sorry for waking you, Mr. Mac. <laughs> you know, what the hell are you doing? That? <laughs> and so we've all had that. Com we've all noticed that conflict in our in, 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 in our minds. It's played out. Okay, that's played out in a really sort of um, elaborate way. But it but it was perfect. Jesus made that movie to say, "Hey, listen, all conflict, any conflict, no matter how small, is complete devastation on the truth of who you are." And then finally, you know, puts him into the lift. And then he has the full the full war with himself and just says, no, he I, I'm, I'm dispelling this belief and then walked through the walked past his fear and said, no, I'm not believing in this any longer. And it's just like, oh, my God. So for you, I am so grateful that you stuck at that, you know, because that I know mind is so strong. And that's the beautiful thing again, like what you had with the experience of community. And that's actually why I came to community. <laughs> I thought, I think I know, I still do. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I think that I know best. Um, and I really don't like being told what to do. And I really don't like rules and guidelines. And so I really, I, 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 want, I want this to be sped up and it's like how I see it. It's like, of course, things are always changing here. And it's like, oh my God. And it's, but it's always to see what I believe in my own mind. So I just feel like extremely, extremely grateful for it, for, for, for being here, because how would I have done this? I'd have been way too stubborn for these lessons to come in. So I've had to come somewhere and to be with all my brothers and sisters to, you know, the Holy Spirit's in charge and he 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 orchestrates things to actually bring about what the what 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 the healing is. And of course the ego, oh he can't stand it and sees it as rules and it's actual fact for the for, for the healing of the mind. And when you have that up front, then nothing can disturb you. And that's what I've actually found. 
over the time, you know, I was sharing with David and everyone at the table the other day, I was like, wow, I can't believe how patient I've become, you know, and that was completely and utterly off my, I'm like, I'm the least patient person in the world. And slowly this sort of patience is coming through and it's like, yeah, just through all of these seeming trials and tribulations that come up and Jesus is saying, no, you don't know what they're for. You have you have you have no idea. We can walk past them like Jake Green. They don't have to affect you at all. And that's why I'm showing you all this. This world cannot affect you. And that was the same as the revolver for you. And so clearly we didn't put it out. So Jesus was like, okay, we've got to keep that. <laughs> we gotta get her in the room. And then you come in the room and go, okay, it was pretty intense, but I did it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's great to know that we're not we're not really uh, dependent on the form at all. I remember I did a lot of traveling. That was intense. Um, <laughs> I lived in a number of different spiritual communities. That was all intense. And then when I would kind of be off in a hermitage or off by myself, finally going, oh, <laughs> island. <laughs> would say, well, why don't we get uh, rent a few movies, DVDs? And oh my gosh, uh, first the VHS, then the DVDs, now the digital movies. Because these, the two filmmakers that wrote this movie, uh, <laughs> Guy Ritchie, who's the director, and uh, Luc Besson, who's the, the producer, they don't hold back. I mean, uh, I think Guy Ritchie, he was married to Madonna Damn. for eight years. And then in the early in their marriage, he made a movie with her called Swept Away. And uh, I heard about it. And one time I, I walked into a gathering. Uh, Jason Warwick was, was holding a gathering and he was showing the movie Swept Away. And uh, he was showing a clip from Swept Away. And I just walked into the gathering and the people were shell-shocked and the woman turned to me and says, why is your friend showing us a rape scene on a graphic rape scene uh, in the middle of the gathering? And I was like, oh, well, I better join in here and see what's going on. He had picked that particular scene of Madonna who's married to Guy Ritchie and I thought, well, these filmmakers are not holding back. And Luc Besson with uh, Lucy, that's a very, very, very graphic movie. But you don't, you don't start there. Uh, you know, I mean, I started with Pocahontas and Lion King. And Jesus is like, yeah, yeah, come on with me. We'll go in the, the wading pool first. Then we'll get accustomed to the water and then swim around. I'm not going to take you off the diving board into the deep end. Uh, that would be just too traumatic. But he, he worked me slowly uh, through the movies. And so for people who say, can you do this without the community? Yes, of course you can. But also when you, you have to have really trust in Jesus to, to guide you to the movies, the relationships, the experiences. I think maybe I always thought I was a slow learner. And I mean, I was sound asleep as a, as a child, timid, frightened, quiet, and then Jesus kind of put me through the ringer, but that involved all kinds of things, travel, relationships, community, and then if that wasn't enough, movies like the ones we're talking about, that at the time I was going through them, it was like, whoa, this is intense. Even if I was just watching it on my own, um, I had to deal with a lot of intense emotions like you're describing. So I just am so grateful for Jesus, how he guides us so uh, specifically. It's almost like a brain surgeon who's got to remove a tumor the size of a baseball. And he's just like scalpel. <laughs> and he knows every little insertion and every little cut, and he'll get that tumor out of the of the gray matter, uh, even though it would look impossible to remove uh, a tumor that big. Uh, that would seem like certain death in the world, but Jesus can 
can, he's a great uh, surgeon of the mind. Um, and he's, he's the way, the truth, and the life. I mean, that's who I want doing surgery on my mind. <laughs> I want, who do you, what doctor you want? I'll take the way, the truth, and the life for this operation. Thank you very much. <laughs> So thank you for sharing that with everybody because I'm sure others have, have gone through those uh, pretty traumatic uh, reactions to uh, certain movie scenes. That's a very common, common thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Um, and next we can go to Sue. Uh, who is in the Camus co-living community. Yeah. You can unmute yourself. There should be a button on your screen that you can press. Um, okay, here we go. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. Hi, hi, Ken. Hi, David. Um, Okay, um, I, I've been on a bit of a, a fast track over the last few months. I was in the Casa for a couple of months and then got guided to come here to Camus. And um, the question I have to ask you is, I, I, I have a problem because of, of sleeping. You know, during, like I really wanted to watch the movie on Saturday. And I'd had a good night's sleep and I really wanted to, you know, get into it. And I fell asleep. And I was doing that in Mexico as well. And um, it's starting, it, it just really bothers me because, you know, I'm, I'm, I really want to find out what, you know, what the Holy Spirit has to tell me. But then I, you know, shut down and fall asleep. I did get to the I did get the end part, you know, the, the elevated scene, which you know was very powerful. But anyway, I wondered what you'd have to say about that. Um, thank you, Sue. Yeah. I in the early years with the course, uh, the first years when I had it, I, I would sometimes read it for eight hours, but my eyes got very, very heavy and it's really not that uncommon with uh, certain movies or certain experiences where, where the mind is just, it can just take in what it can take in. And then, then there's a resistance. And so you're tapping into this resistance in, in terms of the, some of the movies. Um, I actually, it was good because one time I went to, I was doing travels and gatherings and one time I went I think I was up in Michigan and um, a woman who was in the audience while I was talking in the, in the living room, she was sitting on the couch and her, her head just kept nodding. And, and she, she was, I could tell I, I, I did like about an hour and 15 minute uh, talk and, and she was fighting it. She was like a soldier trying not to fall asleep on the couch in the middle of my talk. And finally I, I paused, I said, well, let's all take a break. Let's have a snack or take a little bathroom break. And she came up and she said, oh, David, I'm so sorry. I'm trying my best to not fall asleep during your talk. She said, I have narcolepsy and this is so hard for me, uh, this and that. And I said, I said, no, no, don't. You need not fight this. I'm so grateful that you're here and, and Jesus loves our willingness. Whatever we can offer, a little willingness is wonderful. I said, uh, don't fight it. When you start to feel like you're going out, you just allow yourself to go out. And her husband was sitting right next to her. So as soon as we started the, the second half of the gathering, within one minute, her head just flopped over. <laughs> on her husband's shoulder and she slept through the whole second half of the gathering. So I thought, oh, that's good. It was just, Jesus is so gentle. He's, he, he's saying, you're not going to miss anything. You're not doing anything wrong. Don't fight it. I, I love you just as you are and everything. So then I had uh, an assistant 
who travel with me to all of these gatherings. And it seems like most every gathering, I would just be talking and my assistant, her head would start to wobble. <laughs> Oh, Jesus is really, he's given it to me to make sure I get this one with bleep really good. He's got so much humor. Her head would like wobble, wobble, and then right when I'm in the middle of the talk, her head would just fall straight back, mouth open. And I just continue on with the talk. So, you know, I think the lesson is we just have to be gentle with ourselves and we have to remember we can't jump ahead in things. If we have resistance, then we have to acknowledge that and we have to allow that. Um, and and actually Kenneth told that whole thing where it's Sunday, you know, he had all these projects and everything and he prayed and prayed and prayed and then uh, everything, you know, came through and, and then he even found out that the, his helpers were saying, oh yeah, just let us know, we can come, we can come, we can help you. That's the gentleness of, of being gentle with yourself and not like really trying to push it. Don't try to push the envelope, don't try to push the, the river because that's, we can only go with our own level of readiness. And even if you're willing, which I know you're willing, but the willingness has to go with the readiness. And sometimes we have too much resistance. And even when we're willing, it, we still encounter that resistance, but that's okay too. It's all working together for the good. So just be real, real gentle on yourself. Yeah, um, she, can you unmute again, Andy? Okay. Go ahead. Can you hear? Yeah. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Well, I know. I, I mean, I do, I really did, you know, hear Jesus tell me not to worry about it when mm -hmm. I was in Mexico, and I, you know, when I got back, it was fine. And I hear again now, here in Camus, it started again, and I, I, you know, and I was just, I suppose I just got to be gentle with myself, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know what we, we we don't we don't know either jesus says in the course of miracles i can work with your daytime dreams as much as your nighttime dreams so like it or like it he is contacting you <laughs> you know <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. <laughs> Thank you, Theo. And next up, we can go to Esther. Esther, you can unmute. Thank you so much. You know, David, the teaching that you got from Jesus, um, it was nothing so blinding as perception of form. The sight of form means that understanding has been obscured. The goal of the curriculum, no matter the teacher you choose, is know thyself. There is nothing else. And then today, I got from Alan's video watching from Vivekananda, the realization of the ideal is the effect. In other words, the laughter, the, um, the means are the cause, the seeing. Attention to the means, therefore, is the great secret of life. And I'm like going on and on to Francis today on her little gathering with us about how this is happening and this is happening and I feel uncomfortable and Alan's like, just admit it, you're upset. It can't be for those reasons, you know? And I'll tell you something really interesting with these teachings that I've been getting from you and, and the saints uh, and through Alan is just yesterday, my mother may have injected twice a lot of Novolog, her insulin medication. And I'm like, I'm like, Alan's asking me, what's happened? I said, something terrible. He says, oh, you're really gonna play a role with me? I said, no. I, I said, no, everything's fine. Uh, because I was, I, was, I was doing an act, you know, and I saw it and I didn't have to. And 
and also the um you know you just take the steps you call the doctor find out what they say they say if the sugar doesn't go down take her to the hospital well her sugar didn't go down but i didn't think it was for uh, you know anything to worry about and then this morning everything was fine but it's just like alan was telling me he said it wouldn't be happening if you weren't ready for it. It's your movie. And I'm like, over in my mind, I'm thinking, oh yeah, it's, it's my movie. It's my movie. I was just laughing. It's never would have happened before that I could be at peace for so many, twice, two days in a row. Every, all these things are going on. And I'm just like, and I got reflections from my stepfather. I, I shared with him something that I shared on one of the movies gatherings. I think the revolver movie gathering I shared with him. I never share him details like that. And and he's like, he said to me yesterday, you know, I really think this Living Miracles is doing something for you, Esther, you know? And I was like, oh, thank you for acknowledging me. <laughs> <laughs> so these teachings, I'm just so grateful. And um, just, I want to I wanna keep it in my mind that it's only one thing, that it's just, what teacher am I choosing? Beautiful. Thank you, thank you, Esther. Beautiful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Esther. And next we have Al with her hand up. You can unmute. Hi. Hi, Al. Hi, Al. Hi, David. Hi, everyone. Um, I also wanted to speak a little bit about Revolver. Um, I had a profound, deep experience from watching the movie. And um, after the movie, I went into my closet to do some praying. That's become a habit, a new habit that has just sort of changed my life. Um, and I just laid it all, I just connected with God first and then I really gave my deep dark secrets to the Holy Spirit and I have not been the same since I I um I David I remember at some point you've been doing this when you talk about the ego <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like you know, I, this was, you know, that was days ago. And even today I noticed, you know, my, my ego has been so quiet. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, between the closet and revolver and it's, it's been amazing. So uh, there was one thing I wanted to talk about the movie. Um, I, you know, I was with Jake all along and judging um, Maka, mostly, um, trying to figure him out or whatever, and his motivation and things and, and all about the greed and everything. And, and I was, okay, and I was relating to both characters. My ego um, has been as vicious as Jake's. And um, I see my ego would have me believe that I have some similarities with Maka. And um, uh, just, you know, hearing Jake's ego was thrilling for me. So when Jake walked out and walked past Maka, after a few days, I realized that I've been wondering about Maka because I feel empathy for him. I feel bad. I felt bad for him. And, and then I'm, I'm, so I'm sort of just kind of figuring out and I wonder if you can help me. Um, it seems like uh, he, his life changed too from the experience. Maybe that seems a little obvious, but um, you know, his life, changed from what happened with Jake and that whole experience. So just kind of wanted to get your ideas about that. <laughs> it's, it's, I think the thing was at the end there, 
you connected with the call for love, with Maka's call for love when he was crying and the tears were coming down his face. And then that's probably where you start feeling him and thinking about him after that. So I would say that that's just a symbol that you're connecting with the call for love. And and Jesus tells us that everything is, is to the Holy Spirit is love or a call for love. And he says, you cannot make this distinction because you are bound too bound to form and you don't know what content is. But that was your shift in mind where you start to really tap into the call for love uh, from Maka, away from the kind of the gangster mob boss to the, the call for love. And that is huge because when we are able to, to perceive that, then the love that's in us will automatically come out. Like you're feeling it towards Maka, it will work in transfer to all your relationships. When you, when you don't buy into the form and you really tap into that call, then the love will start to flow through you more, more freely. Because all of us know, we love, we love to feel the love. We know when we're being showered with love, it's pretty obvious. It's glorious. But the calls for love, that's where the transfer of training has to have, with where you really start to perceive the call for love. So it's really, I think it's a time of rejoicing that you you felt that, and now that will start to, Jesus will start to practice with you to see that in, uh, in a number of different encounters and uh, relationships. So it grows very strong. It's really true empathy, but it's growing like a seed that's gonna grow stronger now in you all. Yeah, and the, um, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh... Because, you know, he also shows his weakness, doesn't he, when um, meeting Mr. Gold and um, he's he's frightened. Um, and the, the representative, I can't remember the woman's name now, the representative comes and, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I won't mess up for Mr. Gold. And yeah, as David was sharing, you know, that was the call, that, that, that was the call for love um, underneath everything and that the ego is this fear and he was being ruled by these ego thoughts um, and that had become his life and he didn't know a way out of it. His life was get rid of people um, to dispel his fear, get rid of them because he was extremely frightened. But in actual fact, as Jesus teaches, the only thing you're frightened of is actually you're actually more frightened of the love. And it was always for him a call, a, a call for love. Um, through th throughout so there were sort of certain scenes in the movie where he was showing his vulnerability and wanting he need, he needed something but he just didn't know he didn't know how to um get it and as david shared you know like the sort of the, f the final scene of like jake walking past him when someone does that and um shows that they're not that the fear is not to be feared um that had to have an effect on him too that it's, it's inevitable when one is healed and we are all healed so it's the same same for us all isn't it so i'm sure it had a huge effect on him. <laughs> yeah yeah it's wonderful thank you <laughs> Thank you, Al. And um, we have a little over 10 minutes left. So if you still have a hand up, just um, make, make sure it's short and concise so we can get to everyone today. And um, next up, we have Maya with her hand up. You can unmute. Hi. Hi, Maya. Hey, Maya. How are you? Thank you, guys. And I uh, really appreciate it. I am. Um, I, yeah, I want to keep it short. Um, yeah, I'm having a lot of dark thoughts like the last couple of days. I have a intense hatred for, and I feel ashamed about it. I feel embarrassed to people who are pro-vaccine. And I'm like, like I, I am embarrassed, but I know how important it is to expose this. You know, I want to heal it. 
and I was uh, a week ago, my sister had a brunch for me because of cancellations and storm for my birthday. And so the family got together and her friend, uh, her friend Bill said, did you wear your mask? Cause I, you know, I put on Facebook, I wouldn't wear my mask and I was, you know, ego angry. And so I didn't say anything, but I, I actually took a taxi to my sister's and then my whole family was talking about the vaccine. And I, and so the last couple of days, I've just been like, I, I know it, I, it's all for my healing and I want to, I want to forgive this. And, um, but yeah, I just want to unfriend and un, like block people on Facebook. And it was one, one guy I blocked him on Facebook this morning, like, and he's, he's not a close friend, but he, he was said, I want to, I want to raise some money for um, the coronavirus vaccine. So then I blocked him. Like I was just like irrational, but I, it's like my mind is scheming and it's like, I want to block all my whole, my whole family, you know, and it's like, so yeah, I'm embarrassed about it, but I think I need to, I want to heal this, you know, cause I feel, I, I feel horrible. Like I feel, I know like me, it was said in the beginning, this is, this is my hell, right? This is like, this is not, it's not coming from God, you know, what, what am I afraid of, right? With this vaccine shit. So yeah, I feel really bad about it. And I, um, yeah, so, and then he, and the sweetheart, uh, Enrique, <laughs> he was, he put a post about people, um, you know, you know, people have a right to want to vaccinate. I mean, what, but I guess I'm just really, um, yeah, I'm just exposing it. I, I think it's, I mean, obviously crazy, but yeah, that's what I've been doing. And I want, you know, it's like, how is that going to work? Like, oh, you know, I've, I'm, I had a big fight with my sister and my younger brother and I blocked them on the phone. But I, if I block them on Facebook, then there's no way they'll can contact me. Right. But there's, it's, I know there's something going on with me, you know, it's, it's, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, why am I, it just seems to be a pattern that I have like, and um, yeah. But it's, good. it's good that you're, you're aware of it. I mean, that's, that is, this is a world where the ego jumps on pro and con and for an issue and against, and it can be political. It could be a vaccination. It can be anything. Uh, and it, it could be an interpretation of the course. Some people jump on one and, and jump against another. But I think just that you came on and exposed it and shared it with us and with everyone is the first step in releasing it. So, so thank you, Maya. Thank you for coming on and just being so transparent. You know, it's, it's really precious. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Um, and next up we have Helena. You can unmute. Have I done it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. 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 Um, David just mentioned that, um, or oh, something about, I don't know, um, different ideas about the course. And um, as I shared with Kenneth, I've been reading the book by the Circle of Atonement that's comparing Watnick's teachings with the Circle of Atonement's teachings. But it's got a beautiful introduction where it says, it's not sharing those different views in order to conflict. Then it's not trying to turn one Course in Miracles student against another. It's to encourage a debate, you know, to encourage exploration. And that's what I always used to want to do as a, when I was a teacher, you know, a, as my job. And um, I'm really loving the book. It isn't causing any conflict in me at all. I'm just absolutely adoring it. And I, I think everyone ought to read it. 
no, no, that, that, that's that's a joke. I don't really think everyone ought to read it. But um, I I thought it was going to cause conflict in me, but actually, I'm finding it very beautiful. And it's it's also resolved a lot of things for me because um, it didn't. It's never sat very comfortably. The feeling that or having the thought that other people are illusions and that, and that everything's an illusion. So it doesn't really matter what I do because everything's an illusion. That, I mean, that, that's never sat, that kind of interpretation has never sat very comfortably with me. And um, a bit like the very first person who spoke, it's that I don't know mind. It's, it's bringing me deeper and deeper and deeper into that I don't know mind. And, and just surrendering to that and it and it doesn't matter and neither do I want to, although I've read every version of the course I can get hold of over the last 20 years I don't want to be a scholar of A Course in Miracles anymore and as Kenneth also knows I burned most of my copies of A Course in Miracles <laughs> I gradually burned them on the fire <laughs> or I've given them away some of them that that I mean, most of them are so mauled and written all over. Those are the ones I've burned. <laughs> but other ones I've given away that, that haven't been so mauled. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to be, a, you know, I don't want to know it off by heart. I mean, I love what David always emphasises is, is, lis is listening to the Holy Spirit. And, um, yeah, no, no words, really. And I always feel so peaceful when I've been with you guys. I love it so much. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. It's always good for forgiveness. Forgive the debate and stay warm. Even if you have to burn a course as a log on the fire sometimes. You know, that reminds me of Bill Thetford said if you instead of arguing with the course student about an interpretation of the course, he said it's better to rip the page out than to argue with a brother. So yeah, we're all for that. We're all for the joy and the clarity and the letting go of uh, debates and, and judgment. So thank you, Helena. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you so much. And you know, Jesus knows our minds are always different. So he's just reaching us in any way that we can. And as he teaches, you know, if the workbook doesn't work then you can the text and if the text doesn't work you have the you have the manual for teachers so he just reaches us in the way that is perfect for our for, for our mind and so yeah that's just the, that that's just the beautiful thing of his teachings so yeah we do what we need to do and he knows best thank you yeah we have a few minutes left but we have one hand left yeah uh, Okay. Yeah. Well, it's um, Jessica. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Jessica. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you, Kenneth, for sharing today. I feel like I found a new profound love for you, and it was beautiful. Uh, but overall, I want to thank both of you for hearing the movie. And what I want to share is my experience with the movie. I had a really strong, beautiful, amazing experience. But the peace that I felt and carried with me after, I, I didn't know was possible. And uh, I've been hearing all these um, songs in my mind. And it's all songs about praising Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And I didn't think I would ever hear these songs. It's a constant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, I keep feeling like I, um, I have this, uh, yeah, in love feeling is the, <laughs> and uh, the ego, yeah, right. <laughs> it's it's so distant, and it's so it's almost like the volume has gone down, and I get to witness it, and I get to realize how I can choose. And then I go in and then I just feel this, it's just so calm. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. it's like another channel. <laughs> and, uh, 
it's just this <laughs> love. So I'm just in love, and um, I I feel like I've been giving a space that I can tune into, and it's so much closer than I've ever been able to feel it. So yeah, just just wanted to share that. Yeah, thank you. I feel the yeah. I feel the same with the movies. The movies are my favorite, you know, Saturdays. And you go all the way through that with David's teachings. And I mean, I have exactly the same experience. The next day I wake up and I am in complete peace. And I'm just, thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh my God. It's just, I don't know what the movies do, but <laughs> somehow they are just absolutely awesome that we have the uh, whole day workshop. And even Rudy's there with you. And if, every time... Rudy comes to the house on Tuesday. He says, these, work, these movie workshops, they're just amazing. I just love them. I just absolutely love them. And I'm like, yeah, join the club. So it's the place to be on Saturdays. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> and and you are just that beautiful witness of, of sharing that with us because that's the only reason why we're doing anything is just to share the peace, the love and the joy. So thank you so much for that. That's that's beautiful, Jessica. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's beautiful with all those praise songs going. Maybe I, 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 they told me today I have a, I have a few invitations I can give out because uh, the, the Bible thing I'm doing tomorrow, they have a small Zoom room, but they have a few spots. So you could just uh, maybe mute, mute yourself and just sing praises to Jesus and the Holy Spirit while I'm doing my talking to all my Christian friends. <laughs> That's what I need. You could be the choir. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> thank you, Jessica. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, well, thank you, everyone. Let's go to gallery view to say goodbye. Oh, thank you so much. So wonderful being together. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's always fun. Uh, I love the, I, I get the message from you and it's like, <laughs> you've got the title, No Boundaries. And then <laughs> I, I get to read through all the stuff, overcoming the crucifixion <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and then here we are, we, we all make it. It is. Uh, yeah, oh, thank there's you. Jacob up there. Hi, Jacob up at Gamus, <laughs> popping in. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so grateful for these sessions as well. And uh, as I always say, it doesn't happen without you and these beautiful join-ins and your beautiful sharings to help us all go deeper. And I just feel so much gratitude for this. And yeah, Jesus is with us always in this. So. I always thank the master for everything. Thank you for bringing everyone into my life to heal our mind and to go deeper. So thank you for Thursdays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, love you. <laughs> Have a lovely week. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.